Okay, so in a previous video, we defined Euler's totient function. So it's the number of positive integers smaller than n that are relatively prime to n. So that's how we would define phi of n. Um, so, and we also proved a formula for uh, phi of a prime. So in this video, we want to look at a formula for phi of a power of a prime. So I'll write down the proposition first, then we'll look at uh, a couple of examples, and then look at the proof carefully. So the proposition is as follows. So for a prime p, we have phi of p to the r equals p to the r minus p to the r minus 1. Good. So, like I said, before we do the proof, let's look at some examples. So let's uh, first look at maybe 2 cubed, which is, in other words, 8. So I want to write all 8 um, numbers between 1 and 8, but I want to write them in an array so that I can count this carefully. And so the way that I will do that is as follows. So I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so I've made this array so that everything in my last column is a multiple multiple of 2, which makes everything in my first column relatively prime to 2. And so since it's relatively prime to 2, that means it also has to be relatively prime to 2 cubed. Um, in fact, you know, if something is relatively prime to a power of a prime, then it has to be relatively prime to that prime and vice versa. So now notice what we get here is we can count up 1, 2, 3, 4. Good. So that tells us that phi of 8 equals 4. So uh, maybe this doesn't give us some insight into the proof in general, but maybe if we do one more example, we'll have some insight. So let's look at um, 3 squared. So if we have 3 squared, which is obviously 9. So again, I want to make an array. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So now I have an array, and it's a little more interesting because it has three columns instead of two columns. And now notice, in general, I'm going to have p columns, where p is my prime. And now, notice on uh, this last column, we have all of the multiples of 3. So those are all of the multiples of 3. And if you are not a multiple of 3, then you can't be relatively prime to 3. So that tells you that everything over here is relatively prime to 3. Great. So now notice that tells us that phi of 9 equals 6. So let's see what's really going on here. So now notice in this case, we made an array that was 2 by 4. And the last column was a multiple of 2. The first column every, was everything relatively prime to 2. So in fact, we're taking kind of the area of this uh, subarray that's left over after we delete everything that's a multiple of 2. Now in this uh, next example, we're making an array that's 3 by 3. We're taking off the multiples of 3, and now notice what's left is an array which is 3 by 2, which is 6. And so that'll be the motivation for the general proof, as we'll see once we clean up this board. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board, and then uh, we'll look at this um, generally. Okay, now we're ready to look at the proof in general. So we have a prime p, and we're looking at a power p to the r. So what we want to do is lay out all of the numbers 1 to p to the r in an array. So let's arrange 1, 2, 3, all the way up to p to the r minus 1 times p to the r in an array as follows. So we'll do it like this, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to P. 
And now this is P plus 1, P plus 2, all the way up to 2P. And now the next thing will be uh, 2P plus 1, 2P plus 2, all the way up to 3P. Good. And then finally at the end, we will have uh, P to the R minus 1 uh, plus 1, P to the R minus 1 plus 2, all the way up to P to the R. Great. Now if we wanted to look right above this, this would be P to the R minus 1, and now this would be uh, P to the R minus 2 plus 1, and so on and so forth. So this is the structure of our array. Good. So now, <clears throat> what we can see is, of all of these numbers laid out in this array, this column at the very end is the only thing that is not relatively prime to P. And we can see that because um, everything here is given by uh, you know, taking the quotient with P and then looking at its remainder. So everything here has a remainder of 1 when divided by P, everything here has a remainder of 2 when divided by P, and all the way up here, everything down here has a remainder of P minus 1 when divided by P. So over here, these are all multiples of P, and then over here, this is everything that is relatively prime to P. And now since we've arranged this as an array, all we have to do is find the um, height and width of this array. So let's see if we can do that. So now notice this is going to be, uh, the total array is 1 to P uh, wide, so that means what's left over is P minus 1. So we have p minus 1 uh, numbers running the width of the array. And now let's look at the height of the array. So notice we have 1 times p, 2 times p, 3 times p, and then if we uh, view this number down here as p to the r minus 1 times p, we can see that um, the width of the, uh, sorry, the height of the array is given by p to the r minus 1. Good. So now, <clears throat> All of those things that I've just said um, allow us to count up the numbers in this portion of the array. So the numbers in this portion of the array, which are uh, uh, which give us all the numbers relatively prime to p to the r, so that will be p minus one times p to the r minus one. So again, that tells us that phi of p to the r is p to the r minus 1 times p minus 1, which is exactly equal to p to the r minus p to the r minus 1, and that finishes the proof. So I think this is proof, this proof is pretty nice because it has a nice visual component to it. Um, and as you'll see, uh, some more proofs that involve Euler's totient function have a nice visual component.